Today's topic is a rather popular one and has been requested by some of my viewers. This time, I'll be talking about commissioning. What do you do to get started as an artist and what should you continue to do to receive more works in the future? One of the goals artists will certainly have is that they want to start making money off their works. However, the art market, especially the digital one, is one of the most competitive market around. If you're planning on tackling this competition, here are some advices I have for you. 1. Getting started You certainly don't want to head into a competition without any preparation. And when it comes to art, it's best you start as soon as possible because there are a lot of things you will have to cover if you don't want to stop and this can take a very long time. You will want to cover the following. One, a good evaluation of your own skill in order to determine your price range. 2. A secure and stable fan base so you have people supporting you. And 3. The right market location or website. A good evaluation of your own skill. This step is very important because you must be able to figure out what you can draw and how long it will take to consistently produce a piece of the highest quality. Don't overestimate yourself and price your art at something like $30 an hour for an amateur piece, but also don't undervalue your own work and price them at like $3 an hour. The best way to do this is to start streaming. Even without anyone watching, it's way easier to get in the mood and draw for hours and hours without taking a break once you start streaming, because you never know. Someone might start watching you all of a sudden, and you don't want them to see you slacking. Most streaming sites, like Picato, can also record your past streams, so you can always go back and estimate how long it usually takes to complete a piece without accounting in for any time you might spend struggling and not making any progress. Once you figure out your average time, do some good comparison to get a general idea of where your current skill is at. You can estimate how much you should charge per hour for the work of your quality. For example, I average around 5 hours for a simple full body piece with no background assuming I don't take any needless breaks. After doing some comparisons and taking advantage of my location where it's quite cheap to pay the bills and buy foods here. I decided to price my work at $6 an hour. However, to make room for some slight mistakes, I bumped it up to $7 and that's my current price. $35 for a full body piece with no background. Once you have that part figured out, it's time to move on to the next. Obtaining a secure and stable fan base. I often hear artists and some watchers saying, watch your counts don't mean anything. I think that is wrong since we have to consider that artists cannot live without their watchers. For every 20 watchers you have, one might start buying a piece from you. And for every 20 buyers, one might be loyal and buy from you monthly. Watcher counts do matter because it helps you keep track of how many people out there are looking at your works and spreading them for others to see. Drawing is one thing. But advertising your works is actually expensive unless it's your watchers shouting them back and forth. So, before you upload the commission sheets of yours, make sure you have a rather decent watcher base to help signal boost it because most of the time, people won't even get to see it as the front page gets flooded really fast and people that do buy from you are those that have been watching you for a while already or recommended by their friends to come to you for very price quality artwork. And what should I do in order to gain a stable fan base? Draw a lot. That's it. You draw a lot and upload a lot. There is no shortcut to this. And it's also why I recommend that artists should start trying to build their fan base long before they even plan on accepting commissions. Obtaining a stable user base can take years and avoid uploading only artworks that are made with the intention to cater to the general user base. Make sure it's the kind of drawing you upload really often. Sure, rushing out a few Pokemon pictures might have to help you out, 
But when you stop drawing them, don't expect most of the Pokemon watchers to stay. That's a very unstable fan base. If you want to make artworks that cater to the user base, draw it once every three or four pieces. This way, when people do visit your gallery, they will still get to see what kind of art you specialize in and follow you for that. And now, on to the last subject, picking the right website. Figure out the website that has the largest targeted customer base instead of just trying to expand your territory on a website that barely notices you. For example, I mainly draw furry artworks, so I use for Affinity, which has the largest furry fanbase. Why at it? Make sure you're trying to make a name for yourself on some kind of social media, site, Twitter, or Facebook. I will cover more on this later. Now that the preparations are all of the way, let's move on to the next. Accepting and working on commissions. Assuming that you have work on your preparation, you shouldn't have trouble landing a few words per month. Sure, it might not earn you thousands of greens right away, but over time, you will obtain more and more recurring customers that will keep you real busy. Here are some tips that I picked up from working for a few years to net me more customer. If you're not getting any work, draw attention grabbing artwork. If no one is contacting you at all, instead of simply waiting, Keep yourself busy and upload something that caters to the user base so they will come and check out your gallery and see your commission sheet. This is so much better than spamming a bunch of reminders that you are accepting commissions because it exposes you in a very active way. When you do get works, make sure you only accept what you can really draw or quickly learn to draw. Do a quick 15 to 20 minute sketch to get the general idea before accepting the work. Sure, it will sting to decline your work, but if you can't guarantee that it can be done with ease, it will hurt your workload and burn you out really fast when you can't figure out what to do next and get stuck. Work fast and update a lot. Don't keep your customers waiting. While customers might be okay even if it takes a month to complete their works, they will be even happier if you work fast and give them consistent update. You are way more likely to be trusted if you keep them updated and if you work very fast, they are more likely to consider you as the go-to artist for work they might need as soon as possible like birthday gifts. Make sure you enjoy working on the piece. This is very important as it can show in the work you're having fun with it or not. You might start adding some personal touches here and there that will make it feel like this piece can only be captured by me and some people really love this kind of thing these are the tips i have to offer as you work on the commission let's move on to the last part that i want to cover that most people seem to neglect post commission connection and socializing your social status plays a very important role in netting you more works like i mentioned earlier Artists cannot survive without their watchers. You want to build connections with your customer so they will remember you. After all, they are also the ones signal boosting your works. This is why I recommend making a name for yourself on a social media. You can play along with your watchers and get closer to them better than replying to every compliment on your works. Just make sure you're doing it because you want to socialize, not because you're trying to coerce them into paying you more money. One last thing I want to discuss is the subject of emergency commissions. Sometimes, life can be really tough, especially when it comes to money. Artists start advertising emergency commissions and ask for help from their watchers. I want to talk about how this can potentially affect the overall image of the artist in the long run. When artists start offering emergency commissions, it can put a dent on their record. While some watchers will help you, some will feel like the artist is trying to guilt trip them into buying. I used to run into money problems too, but instead of offering emergency commissions, I disguised them as a form of sales to go along with festival, like Christmas. In my opinion, this creates a far better and much more confident image of the artist so customer won't have to worry about the artist facing some issues while working on their commissions in the future. These are the topics I want to discuss in this video. 
I hope they will end up being helpful for those trying to make it out there as fellow freelance artists. For the rest of this video, I'll be answering the questions that were not answered in the August Ask Me. What is your name and how old are you? I actually random this for the comic but it's best answer vocally because of the pronunciation. My name is already out there anyway whenever people uh, try to pay me on PayPal. My name is Puharino Sangsnit and I'm currently 24. What was the inspiration between the different deities? I actually went with the element chart when I started out like most fantasy series and expanded on that. Every god will have a certain trait attached to them, like Lumicia is caring so I made her look like a martyr, while Andemone is cunning so I made him a trap. One important thing I have to keep in mind is that the people of Antrolan worship the gods like real world religion with churches and temples. For fun, I decided to stick a few stereotypes here and there from our religion into the world as well. I won't answer though which god is based on what religion, so you will have to read the Fantoran to figure it out yourself. What was the contract that Foss mentioned in Antrolan? I'm not answering this one, spoiler territory. Does Enfys have any siblings like Wolfram? Nope. That's it for this video. If there is a topic you want me to cover in the future, leave a comment and I will have a look at it. I'll see you next time.